Let's begin by playing the lower third motion graphic. Take notice of the elements in the graphics, a swooshy background, and the text. Now let's reverse engineer the graphic to see exactly how it was constructed. We begin with a rectangle background with a slight gradation in the color and transparency and some simple masks. The first masks are simply used for the animation to expose the background on and off the screen. It's simply an animated alpha channel as seen in the second viewport. Notice that nothing is hidden. You can see the masks attached to the main background tool. After that, we chained in a color corrector. Consider this the main color of the template and a lovely tangerine color has been chosen. After that, we add a glow, again with some masks to highlight the glow in specific areas. Interactive as always, just choose the amount of glow and hit play. Simply add a bit more color correct, and now it's time to take this flat background into a true 3D workspace. 3D is just a matter of fact in Fusion. Understand that it's always available and can be utilized at any time. I can seamlessly move from 2D to 3D at any point in the composition. I'm using a 3D shape to pipe in my animated 2D image. After we arrive in 3D, we could now use a bender tool, which as the name depicts, does exactly that to three-dimensional geometry. You have a choice of bend, taper, twist, or shear with a variety of parameters to go along with it, including, and just ignore that. So, by chaining together a couple of benders, we can create a very cool 3D swoosh, and the original mask is animating it on and off. Add some lighting and a required camera, and now we've easily created part one. Please remember that this title will be available as a template for you to use in your own projects. Now let's move over to the actual title. On the other side of the flow, you'll notice two text 3D nodes, one labeled title and the other one labeled subtitle. By double clicking on those nodes, you can not only change the content, but as well the style of the text. In our case, the decision was not to create the look of the text in the text 3D mode, but rather create it outside with a background and a mask. The background is for the look and the mask is to animate the 3D text on and off, similar to the way we did it in the swoosh. There's a tool called the UV map, which effectively replaces the texture coordinates on the geometry. Now, by replacing the material on the text with the background and the mask, it's going to be really easy to create this 3D text look. Using external sources for the text makes it much easier to truly make this effect an open template. Simply change your source to your liking. Finally, let's put it all together. We have to move everything back into two dimensions for a final output. The way this is done is through a renderer. As a matter of fact, you can use as many renderers as you wish and set different parameters in each. The reason for two renderers in this effect is specifically so they can be combined and that the shadow blend becomes more controllable to your liking. With a final color curves, which is also adjustable, we now have our final lower third.